Hello, and welcome to another episode of Intune.Training, the place to learn how to use Microsoft Intune, the Steve and Adam show with Steve and Adam. What's up, Steve? How's it going? Oh, man, just hanging in there. We're in full winter mode, it seems, on this end. And uh, Not here. Yeah. It's 28 degrees here. It's 28 degrees here. We just, you're using two different uh, scales for measurement. Oh, that's right. You guys use freedom units. <laughs> freedom <laughs> units. That's the one. Uh, yes. Anyway, hey, we have a video that we'd like to do today on what? We're doing a video? I well, we're in a video. Oh, I don't know. It's oh, weird. Oh, okay. Don't yeah. look behind you. There's a guy back there with a beard. He will see. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> let's do a video on Mac OS. Eh? Oh, it's fun. Man. Mac OS is, is good. It, is it too late to stop the recording? Nope. <sighs> Mac yeah. OS. All right. I'm Mac in OS. it. All right. All right. You've asked it. for it. We've yep. heard it. We know it's only taken four years, I think, for us to get back to Mac we've OS. Done, we've done a couple throughout. We the did years, like one but... and another, maybe one and yeah, maybe an iPhone one. And... Yeah, a few. But anyway, so what we're Steve has a Mac today. and he's do, finally prepared it for some things. I have no idea what we're doing, but yeah, uh, you'll find out when I find out and it'll be exciting for all of us. So. The big problem statement for Mac OS, just to make Adam really uncomfortable, is talking about updates. We're actually going to have some updates um, for Mac OS. So today, uh, traditionally, when you deploy, say, Office out to your device, your Mac OS device, it doesn't automatically update. And you as a system, system admin can't go and force those configurations down to the device easily, unless you're using a preference list. But what Microsoft added uh, a while ago, uh, is settings catalogs for Mac OS. So we're going to be going and playing around with the settings catalog for Mac OS uh, and talking well, about updates. I am familiar with the settings catalog. So for Mac that OS? At least, that's at least good. I mean, it's in the same place. Just click on the different OS version. True. So that's good. True. All right. Uh, so what I'm going to quickly do is just show you the before state for my Mac OS that's sitting here. So I'm just going to add my uh, machine to the screen and you'll see here i now have a fantastic mac os it's my my macbook air uh, and it's an m1 mac and if we go here to help and we go to hang on got to select company portal because we were in company portal and we want to go and have a look at the update functionality for that if I'm we go try here, to change our layout here see if we can get some better zoom on that yeah hopefully that uh, doesn't get in the way of Seeing what's going on with that. Um, so then what we've got here is you'll see that we have the ability to go to advanced. And by default, the update channel is current. And me as the end user, I can go in and change that and go, all right, I'm going to change that to preview. I'm, I'm, I'm going to live on the edge, but not quite the edge. And then I've got to accept all of this stuff and all of that. It's like, oh, OK, cool. Um, Part of why you want to do this, as an example, is uh, certain parts of Defender still use the preview version of the Defender client. So that's where you want to be able to force it to go and use the latest version, and you run it through there. The other one that we'll look at and what we'll be setting is under System Preferences, under Software Update, you'll see here by default, the automatic Keep My Mac up to date is disabled. This is the default setting from Apple because they're awesome. Um, so we're going to be turning that on. Because Macs don't get viruses. So we're going to be turning that on um, using the settings catalog as well. So it was a question. I wasn't poking. Uh, that's what I've oh, always I heard. Macs, Macs don't get viruses, so we Apparently. don't need to patch them. That's I didn't right. even know there were patches. for. I only thought that, Mac, that Apple only patched uh, uh, iTunes. Um, iTunes? Yeah ios yeah no itunes oh, okay the music the... management thing i swear it's still version 12 and it's been there for anyways let's carry on yeah that they don't support anymore and nor release and if you're running itunes on your computer at the moment uninstall it please for the love of god stop deploying itunes it's not needed anyway 
Oh, I use my personal machine. That's how I keep my audiobooks all synced up. Okay. You do that. (laughs) Use the cloud. (laughs) Anyway, so that's the scenario that we're looking at to talk through today. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to hand over to Adam, who's going to go through the process to create the policy uh, while he's playing around with our overlays. I was trying to turn off the logo. I don't know, man. All right. I'm uh, already very disinterested in this session, so you have to I, I keep me fully are. engaged, Steve. That's that's why we're going to share your screen, and you're going to create the policy and the profile for us. So <sighs> All right, let fair me know when you're ready. I am ready. Let's go. All right. So I'm going to flick over to Adam's screen here, and in here, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Intune portal, and we're going to then go to devices. Under devices, we're going to scroll down because we're going to make our life easier, and we're going to select Mac OS. And I'm just going to put us off to the left-hand side. And then under here, you'll see we have our single device that is compliant, that is corporate-owned, and it's running 12.6.3, so an old version, but we'll ignore that. So if we go to configuration profiles, what you'll see under here is there's a handful of policies we already have. Um, And you'll see that we have the old preference files, but we also have our certs and our extensions and all this cool stuff. Well, what we're going to do this time is we're going to create a new profile and we're going to select it as a settings catalog. So much like what we have in Windows, we have the drop down to select settings catalog and templates. Give it a really simple name, lowercase m for Mac OS. And we I, can't even, next. I can't even spell funny things correctly. I guess. No, I you objects. cannot. A mud jig, is that right? Yeah, <laughs> and we're going to add settings under here. We're going to search for updates. Well, let's take a moment. Well, since this is our first look at this, true, true. So, <clears throat> there are a plethora of items here. Yep, so you can go in here, for example, and you can set account policies to ensure that your accounts are correct, valid, associated, and but most importantly, disable your guest account. You can also link it to LDAP if you need. It doesn't link to Azure Active Directory today. Um, but the other parts that you can look at is if you scroll up for me, Adam, down, 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 slowly, slowly, uh, you'll see here we have Microsoft Defender, Microsoft Edge, and Microsoft Office. These are all of the um, settings, a lot of the settings you can set for those products, <clears throat> which is pretty cool, right? So it gives you full granular control of those devices and applications. So there's 259 policies for Edge, um, which pretty extensive. And then you can start putting controls around all of that as well. So if we scroll back, and I would, and I guess one note here would be, I, I would expect that largely these settings should. I have never checked, but I would I would guess that they would mirror the settings that are available for edge on windows os and you would probably the ones that configure are configure them largely the same across yep. your platforms correct the one that you won't have there which is of course is you won't have ie compatibility mode and things like that sure so this is probably a good one to start on is the software update so we're wanting to make it so we automatically install updates so if we just select all these settings on the right hand side for us adam and then, oh, hang on, hang on, quick draw. We're oh, going to add some additional on. settings. And if we scroll down right near the top, slightly down, there is the Microsoft update, uh, Microsoft Auto update. Uh, this one not, here, not to be confused with Microsoft Auto Patch or Auto Pilot. This is correct. Auto update. Correct. Uh, and what you'll see here is a list of all of the Microsoft applications that can be deployed <coughs> out to Mac OS. Not all of them, but a good percentage of them. And you can put some controls around how you're going to order to update them and things like that. So if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll also see there's things like remote desktop and you've got your deferral periods and you can say, well, I want it to come from this update server and things like that. So we're just going to go very simple and we're just going to say, select all these settings on the right hand side as well. All 81 of them. Yep. Because we can then go and remove the ones we don't want. And we'll continue. So let's quickly go through and set up some uh, diagnostic data. We definitely want to send all of that. So the first one, we're going to send it to 
send and required and optional data because we want to give all the insights. It's not my computer. Let's go. Exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> the next one we're looking at is the days before forced updates. If you leave it at zero, that means that the setting is disabled. You want to set that to at least one, but ideally whatever your standard is, Numlock does. Numlock. Well. Yeah. Um, you want to set it to the same standard that is required for your security baseline, whether it's three days, five days, seven days, one day, and then how long you want to be able to defer uh, the up, um, updates and the ability to pause the Microsoft update engine or auto update at certain versions. Hang on. That's Was your OS at version 12? Yes, but this is the Microsoft auto update application version, not the OS version. I see. You, I, I know you tried to uh, catch me up there, but yes, it's for the auto update. I was, I mean, you, you admitted you were behind. I just, yep. I don't, I don't know how we're, how far back. Jeez. Exactly. So here where we have the ability to disable, <laughs> uh, insider, all of the cool stuff, um, Definitely want to disable that, even though we're going to turn it on by default. Um, one thing that we will remove is the update cache server because we're not going to set that because it's not needed. Um, the final countdown is actually pretty cool as well. You can sit there and make it longer or shorter as needed. The one. I mean, we need to have the. Just play, you need to, when you're editing this, you need to insert that track right here. Mm -hmm. Great. I'll let you do that, Adam. Um, oh. Never mind. Yep. We don't we'll see more of that. <laughs> um, so the update channel is the one that's interesting for me. So if you hit that drop down arrow for me, Adam, um, you'll see there we have the four options. So the current channel deferred wasn't in the UX, but it's actually an option as well. But we're going to be bleeding edge here and we're going to go to beta because beta has a whole heap of additional defender stuff. And we can do this at this the is, platform level. This is almost... No, this is, yeah, it's right in line with the naming conditions. Yep. Um, and then we can go through and do other products as well. So we can actually specify different channel versions for each application, which is super important because we might want to have Defender in beta and we want everything else in current channel uh, or OneDrive because there's this new feature in there or something like that. And this is uh, how you can control This that. is wonderful that uh -huh. pre precedes the application ID. Uh, uh -huh. It's unexpected, actually. Yes. So that's all there. Um, we can go through each one Question. of these individually. Yes. If we know this is the OneDrive channel setting thing, yep. what would the options be to change this? Like can I take the word ID and put it here in the OneDrive spot? And I don't like, believe so. So if you so what's in there. so what's the purpose of it being there? Oh no, it is. Um, yeah. I so my assumption is that that's if you're running an older version. So say for example, you're running Run OneDrive sixteen, you change it to sixteen, and you could specify that version. Uh, okay. I just, or if you're running a super insider version, you can change the application ID that appears on the application itself. Well, if you've made it this far in the video and you know the answer, please leave the leave a comment and let us know what this is, what the idea is for. Yes. Um, so the, yeah, as you can see, you can go through and do a whole heap of all the applications. This is so that if they get installed, they'll get changed to the version that you want. Simple answer. Uh, and then you've got the Edge Canary versions. Um, same with Defender, uh, which is interesting. We have Defender and we have Defender ATP, but they have the same application ID being WDAV00. Um, and then there's the auto updater. So each one of these we've set down as at the top level, we're saying change it to beta, but then we can go on through and change each one individually. Okay, so hang on. So let, let's... Wanna, okay, so we have explicitly said go beta for all yes even though these are specific that we're then including these in the policy yep. to set them to current i believe that's how that will work I, I guess so question then is why put these individual apps in the list 
would it then be would it then disable auto updates for them if they're not in the list actually you might be right it might be the opposite way around if you leave them in there it's going to it would uh, override the override. beta designation right yep. yep i think that's right so I mean, if you leave it as not should, configured we should probably confirm that but uh that would be my that's how i would expect yeah it that's how i would read it as well so if it's here it's going to override what you so yep. select so, overall yep okay that's what we're going with yep we may have to delete the whole video as a result of the statement we will not <laughs> and we won't correct it okay Correct. perfect <laughs> Carrying um, so on. Like, yeah. <laughs> so before we hit save, what we're going to do, see where it says restrict software update require admin to install. Uh, that's where we're going to leave that as false. Oh, okay. For software updates, you want anybody to be able to install. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Um, but what you'll see here is we're saying automatically install everything else. Mm -hmm. um, the automatic check is enabled. <clears throat> we're saying in go and install pre-release if you've got access to the pre-release media, everything. Because we wanted to make sure you are patched. Super, super important. So if you now just hit next, and we have no scope tags, and we're going to be very wrong in doing this, all users, all devices, I should say, but before we hit that, we're going to add edit <coughs> filter, and we have a filter here for Mac OS. So it only applies to our Mac OS devices. You should go watch our uh, filters Filter video, video to know how we created that. Correct. I guarantee it won't be up there in a link because we won't remember to put it. Damn it. <laughs> Just Damn go it. search. It won't, <laughs> it won't be any of these directions. Go search on our <laughs> channel. <laughs> um. <laughs> Quality is always, Steve. Quality is always. You know it. All right. So that goes off and it creates the policy. Fantastic. Same as we always would. So then what we're going to do next is we're going to go to our devices, Mac OS. Question. Oh, sorry. I know yes. you were doing testing before. Do we need to unadvertise or un up? unassign? Okay. I thought you did. Just check it. Okay. We, we showed that when we showed <clears> the policy, wasn't there? Um, so now if we go to the Mac OS devices, what we're going to do is we're going to select our device and then we're going to hit sync. <laughs> you don't want to do that one. You hit. You want to hit erase. <laughs> I just, you know, <laughs> you know that thing you're talking about earlier, Steve. There's a thing yes. here even on the positioning of the most detrimental buttons to least detrimental, uh, yes. most likely to click over here, least likely to click over there, and yet those are the bad. And actually, yep. these are all. There's all over the place. We've got retire all the way to erase. Like, yep. it's a landmine. Field. Land and and and, and the middle one, the middle one is the I mean, safe one, which is sync. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a bell curve. Like I, I want like utility functions and then like wipey functions. <laughs> That's two separate <laughs> sections. Protect me from myself. <laughs> So, so what we're going to do, just because we want to force the policies to apply, is I'll you get you to hit the restart again. button there. No, oh, I, was just, I was going to get you to restart. All right. Um, because what this will do is it'll force the policy to reapply to the device at restart. Um, it's a little bit quicker, and it should do everything we need it to. Um, so it's going to send a restart command to my Mac eventually. Um, as always, Adam's in Texas, I'm in Sydney, so it may take a little bit of time to process through to my device. You can just hit the buttons locally too. Can I? I can. Just do the clicky, just do the clicky on your side. Why don't, you share, why don't you share your screen? There you go. It's unhappy with me at the moment. Of course it is. Because it's Steve's computer. And doing the clicky, it's not working. We need to have an entire video montage of us waiting for policy syncs. Yes. And then we need to like pair it with paint drying. Yes. And look, my computer just restarted. 
Look at that. That's phenomenal. It worked. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the obnoxious ding from Apple where All they right. can't hide that. You literally can't make that go away. I don't believe so. Jeez. And my super secret password. Uh, Man, it looks a lot like Windows 11. They shouldn't have copied Microsoft so much. And we're going to sign in quickly. One of the things you'll note that is the company portal doesn't automatically sign in. Um, it'd be nice, but it doesn't. Uh, but it's still actually processing under the hood. So I noticed the same thing on, uh, on an iPad this week. Um, yep. Just testing that stuff out and noticed the same behavior. It's kind of so if we go to check for updates... Note now the automatic keep Microsoft apps up to date is grayed out and we go to advanced and you'll see that it's now on the beta channel. Awesome. Uh, and then the other thing that we're going to check here is under system pre uh, preferences, we're going to go to software updates and you'll note that it's ticked the box to keep my Mac automatically up to date. And when I go to advanced, everything else is automatically kept up to date. So uh, I'm going to ask you, can you yes. go to the Microsoft-y one uh, and can you see the individual apps listed somewhere? No. So if we go to advanced, well, not advanced. Someone could, just Steve may not be able to. <laughs> yes, that's correct. So if we go here, I've only got three apps installed. What um, if you go to advanced or was that where we were? That was where we were. So if we go back over here, Let's go and have a look at preferences and no, I thought it was in here where you could set the version. Let's go open up regedit and let's go look. There is no regedit. I literally have spent less than an hour of my entire life on a Mac. So <laughs> <laughs> and and all of that hour has been, I don't know what I'm doing. That Every doesn't time. surprise me, Adam. That doesn't <laughs> surprise me. Um, this it's so, not a slight against a Mac. I just this is completely foreign territory for me. I got no yeah. clue. No, and that's fine. And and this is where uh me personally I've spent a little bit more time than Adam on these sort of stuff, uh, but I am not anywhere near as fluent as somebody who uses it every day. So this is where we sit there and go, yeah, it's doing this, but we might be wrong. Yeah, it's a good possibility. All righty. Cool. Well, well, we did the that's, thing. Well, that's what we wanted to talk about. Is that we the whole actually, deal? Yeah. Oh, we got to keep talking. We only 20 minutes at this point. Come on. Oh, this is phenomenal. Yeah. Well, thanks for sticking with us. I know this is a surprise that we're already at the end. Um, Go us. Our yeah, demos a, worked. You'd be normally having like intermission and snack break and bio break and coming back while we're waiting for things to sync. But we are already done. So if you've just now come back from your snack break, sorry, we're done. <laughs> One thing that I will say, because it's a short video, Make sure you turn up to MMS. Oh, yeah. Whichever year you're watching this video in, there's probably yes. an MMS. Yes. <laughs> First week of May uh, that year. Um, and exactly. maybe you get the bonus uh, follow one in October. This year, mm -hmm. in 2023, it will be in um, Miami. Miami Beach. So, yeah, it'll be fun. Um, yes. All righty. Well, like and subscribe and all those things. Leave us some comments about this. Let us know what we messed up and we will delete your comments, but we appreciate the feedback. We do read them. We don't we do. reply. Often. We usually just Unless screenshot them and send them to each other and say, Oh my God, did you see this one? <laughs> it's very good. Make them funny, please. Yes, we do like them. Uh, all right. Well, uh, speaking of liking, like and subscribe and later tater. Thank you.